Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for August 16th, 2023. Well, I'm back after a little more than two weeks absence, and I have to say, this is a most extraordinary moment in history. And I'm very happy to bring you the developments and, and encourage you to join with us because now is the time where we can make changes that will affect the next 50 to 100 years of human history. Now, I want to begin by covering the significance of events which occurred 52 years ago yesterday, when after three days meetings in Camp David, President Nixon announced the end of the Bretton Woods system and the removal of the gold reserve system, that is a gold backing for the U.S. dollar. Uh, this was largely under the influence of three people, Arthur Burns, the Federal Reserve Chairman, but most importantly, Paul Volcker, who was a Deputy Secretary of the Treasury and later became famous for his support for the Trilateral Commission's controlled disintegration policy. And the other person was George P. Schultz, a longtime operative of Wall Street who continued in influential positions in government for the next 30 years. Now, what they did in doing this was end a system in which the United States had been a powerful economic driver for the world economy. It was the most powerful economy after World War II, and it remained so for another couple of decades. Even with the division of the world into two blocks, the Soviet bloc and the Western bloc, but that two block system ended with the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, 1992. Now it was at that point that the leadership of the United States at the time under George Bush and his project for a new American century, Cheney, Wolfowitz and others, adopted the idea that the U.S. was the sole superpower in the world, the unipolar order, and that all nations much, must adapt themselves to the U.S. economic model, which was the only acceptable model for a policy. Now, th that has remained in place till today, but with the fundamental flaw which existed from the August 15, 1971 Nixon decision, which is that the move into floating exchange rates away from fixed rates that were fixed by relationship to the gold of the dollar to gold, the removal of that opened the door for speculation, increasingly wild speculation, which, in which investments and credit were based on the needs of the speculators to maintain their profits, as opposed to investments in the physical economy to produce the goods necessary and the value necessary to improve the circumstances for national governments. Now, the, uh, this was a policy dictated by the central banks on behalf of private banks, because central banks like the Federal Reserve are not government agencies, they're private, controlled by private bankers. And the, the dictates from those banks was to nations, if you get out of line, you'll be hit with international monetary fund conditionalities, cut off of credit, you'll be subject to coups, sanctions, and wars. And that's been the policy, especially since the 1971 period. But since the fall of the Soviet Union, increasingly we've been engaged in a policy of perpetual wars to protect a speculative system which benefits a very small group of corporate cartels and financial oligarchs. Now, this includes the financial institutions, banking, insurance, big pharma, uh, grain cartels, raw material cartels, and so on, which were sustained by looting countries in the global south. That is, the former colonies were now put under a neo-colonial rule under the direction of these private financial institutions and cartels. And there, were, there was no allowance for sovereign rights of those nations. This is what's changing now. This has been in the works for the last few years, but now we're seeing a dramatic up, uh, uh, increase in the pace of developments. And that's why we have a war in Ukraine. That's why there's a threat for a war in China and possibly wars in Africa and Asia as well. Now, an example of this change is the 11th Moscow Security Conference, which opened yesterday with 76 nations represented at the event. 
The title was Global Security Realities in a Multipolar World. And the opening address was given by Russian President Putin. Now, the fact that there were so many countries involves, involved proves the lie to the argument that Russia is isolated because of the Ukraine war. In fact, Putin opened by saying a multipolar world order is gradually taking shape. And he said, quote, most countries are ready to assert their sovereignty and defend their national interests, traditions, cultures, and way of life, unquote. In other words, the era of Western domination is over to be replaced not by new dictatorships or, or new blocks of nations, but replaced by cooperation for mutual benefit with the aim of ending poverty in all nations. Now, this is a rude awakening for the West. The Western oligarchs don't want this. Now, we see this in the case of France, which is now facing a rebellion in what used to be called Francophone West Africa. For example, Niger. The French have been taking advantage of their post-colonial relationship by extracting uranium from Niger for nuclear power electricity production in France. And well over 50% of French electricity comes from uranium. But in Niger, the country that supplies the uranium, less than 5% of the population has daily access to electricity. Well, a coup took place. And the regime that came in said that they are going to change the relationship with the former colonial powers. The U.S. immediately denounced it. They got the ECOWAS, the Economic uh, Community of Western African States, to threaten to invade. But then something happened. A number of African countries said, no, no invasion. In fact, we want to support this new government. And as a result, when the, the Nigerian uh, uh, foreign minister met with Tony Blinken, and Blinken tried to give him the, the orders to uh, stand down. Blinken was forced to announce after the meeting that we are now looking for peaceful resolution. Blinken, the bully of the rules-based order, calling for peaceful resolution? That's the change. We see that this is happening because of the failure of Western military power in Ukraine. <coughs> Along with the collapse of the Western economies under the effects of green policy, wars, sanctions, and inflation. This will be furthered next week when the BRICS countries open their conference in South Africa on August 22nd. They're preparing for expansion. Many countries want to join the BRICS. They see this as the chance to have cooperation for mutual benefit. And the topic of a new financial system will be on the agenda. It's not expected that it will be adopted, but it will be discussed. Now, will Western leaders compound their mistakes of 50 years ago, the one made by Nixon 52 years ago, by going for more war to defend the unipolar order? Uh, or will we see the beginning of a new system which takes into account the legitimate interests of all nations and all peoples of the world? Well, the question then is, will the citizens in the West have a say? Right now, we have no say. Governments are committing tens of billions of dollars to a war which is destroying Ukraine, killing hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians, and imposing economic policies on Western countries as a result of green policy and sanctions that are damaging the standard of living of most of the population of the West. So is that acceptable? Is it acceptable to you? If not, I would urge you to join with us to insist that we change the axioms of Western domination, especially those that go back to August 15, 1971, and recognize the benefits of peaceful cooperation for mutual development, not only for the global South nations, but for those nations of the so-called Western world. I will have a link at the bottom of the description section today for a registration for a September 9th conference to push this process ahead. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Hello, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. 
Support our independence to produce videos like these. Become a member of the LaRouche organization at thelarouche.org slash member. By becoming a member for $25 or more, you'll get special access to the EIR Alert Daily Briefing and Weekly Magazine, which is what I read to stay on top of things.